Well, it's that time of year again, that time of year where you need to make a zombie jump scare video and share it on the social medias to scare all your friends. So that's what we're gonna do in Blender using VFX and we're gonna do it completely free, free software, free footage, free Mixamo zombie character, all right? So this is fairly simple concepts uh, and nothing I haven't gone over in other tutorials, but if you kind of combine all these things together, then you'll get a really fun result that, like I said, you can share and scare your parents. All right, um, so I do want to remind you before we jump in, my course Astray that I did with CG Cookie is available on CG Cookie. So speaking of scary, creepy things, go check that course out. You can also uh, check it out on Blender Market. The link will be down there in the description. So uh, please check out Astray, another great Halloween themed tutorial for you. Alrighty, let's jump into this uh, zombie jump scare video. I'm going to just kind of go over the broad stroke steps that I did to create this result. And of course I'm in a, a VFX tab in Blender and I'm gonna go into motion tracking and just load in my footage. Now you can shoot any footage that you want. Of course, <laughs> uh, I just chose a clip from Pixabay, a free um, video clip that you can download. I'll link that as well. So after setting my timeline, the frame length I wanted it to be, and you can see it's just a nice dolly pulling out. I have a video on camera tracking before, but I can just briefly go over it. What I like to do is come over here to the left hand side and choose detect features. This then gets this pop up window that we can uh, dial all these settings down. So if we take the threshold down to 0 0.02, and the distance down very low to something like 12, then you'll get a bunch of tracks that you can just track forward by pressing Control T. On the end of the frame, I like to track backwards by pressing Control Shift and T. And you can actually repeat this process of detecting features on different frames of your video and you'll get even more tracks. Once I feel like I've got a bunch of tracks in there, I know a bunch of them are gonna be good and but a bunch are gonna be trash. I can come over here to the Solve panel and under the cleanup menu, specify one frame with an error of one and filter all those bad tracks. Once those are selected, I can just press X and delete the bad tracks. You can do further cleanup by using the tracking graph editor here and find the tracks that look like they're not following the status quo and just remove them. So once that's all done, my tracks look pretty good. They look like they're relatively staying in place. I can click solve camera motion. This gave me a solve error of 0.73. That's beneath one, which is a good solve. So now we can come and under scene setup, choose set as background and set up tracking scene. And that creates those render layers in the compositor while also creating the ground plane for the shadow pass. I set the origin of the scene just by selecting one track in the middle and then selecting three tracks on the floor of that tunnel. Uh, I chose floor so that my ground plane was nested on the floor of my footage. Coming into a layout panel, I can look through our camera. Now I just adjusted the ground plane. This is again the shadow catcher. Um, so I just rotated it around in camera to match up the ground in my footage. Once that's set, yeah, I positioned the cube and added in another sun lamp just so I could view the actual shadow cast. Then you just need to make sure you're using cycles for rendering and check that transparent background in the render settings. Uh, for an example render, I just cranked the samples way down and hit render. This is just purely just to see that my render layers are set up correctly and that my shadow catcher is working properly in the compositor, and it is. Everything's there automatically because we did the camera tracking. So boom, easy peasy. Now back in layout, we can replace our cube and our lamp with actual lights and our zombie character. So for this, what I did was I went to the overlays of my footage and brought back the tracking data in 3D space. So if you come up here to the right hand side, you can bring back those mo motion tracking points. I just press shift S to put my cursor to selected and added a point lamp where the light in the actual tunnel hallway is and tried to mimic the same level of brightness. This is all just kind of guesstimation. But I repeated this process for various light sources in the shot because it's very important that when you're lighting your subject, you want it to you know, look like it actually belongs in the scene. So you need light sources in 3D space that mimic your footage. 
Now it's time for the fun part of getting the actual zombie into the shot. So for this, I went over to Mixamo. This is an Adobe program, uh, but you can choose any character you want. There's a lot of great fun free characters here. And then there's a bunch of preset animations that you can add, which I just find really fun. I thought this goalkeeper pose was hilarious. The side to side run. It just something about a zombie doing that was really funny to me. There are a few settings you can tweak, not much, it's pretty limited, but things like the overdrive and arm space you can adjust to taste. You can also mirror your animation. Once I got an animation I was happy with, I just downloaded the FBX at 24 frames per second, hit download, and I can import that FBX straight into Blender. Now, it's important to know that not all the animations uh, you need actually moving in space left to right or uh, forward or backwards, you can just have them be in place. And then you can adjust the bones in Blender to actually be translating in any direction. In my case, I only needed the animation from the zombie to be a few frames. So I had actually worked out perfectly that I only had about 50 frames to work with. So I just slid those keyframes around until it matched the time that I needed that animation to exist. But of course, there's so much more in depth you can do with this animation. You could manually adjust the bones yourself, or you could copy the keyframes, duplicate them, all that sort of fun stuff. But this worked out well for me to just be able to rotate and move my character so that it roughly matched the position I needed it to end up in in my final shot. And it was just a lot of fun, a very kind of easy fluid process having that animation already baked in. It just made it fun and easy to play with. Then because I already had my lights, I was able to in real time tweak the actual lighting and see how it was gonna rest in my shot using the Cycles render engine. I was also able to position kind of which pillar he was gonna come out from behind so that I knew where I needed to create a mask later on. This is a great place to do a lot of the lighting tweaking and adjustment. So I added an extra ground plane, one that wasn't the shadow catcher, just so I could see the direction of the shadows in real time. This obviously isn't a step you have to do, but it just made it easy while I had an area light in there to just know what direction of the shadows uh, my lights were gonna cast so that it matched my footage. The density of the shadow is important. You wanna look at where how uh, dark the shadows that the other pillars in the scene were casting and try to match that level of darkness. And of course that's done by adjusting the brightness and size of your area light. So then I just, I was pretty happy with the default materials that Mixamo spit out, but I just wanted to take down some of the metallicness and some of the specularity on the pants. Um, I wasn't trying to win an Oscar for the best service here. I just wanted it to kind of roughly set in the scene a little bit more. I found the default material head, not enough spec on the body and too much on the pants. So I was able to just quickly adjust that in Blender shader. Then just adding some backlights for that tunnel behind so that there's a nice cast backlight cast directly onto the subject from behind. Anything to match the light sources in your footage is just gonna pull your character into your shot and make it feel seamless, make it feel like it actually really belongs there. Then I did a test render to make sure my motion blur was good. I was pretty happy with this. So jumping into the compositor, I was able to just do a tweak a little bit of the brightness contrast on my actual foreground subject as well as add some contrast in the shadow i wasn't happy with how contrasty it looks so i punched that up a bit then it was time to move on to masking so i jumped into the masking tab and just Control l left click created a new mask named it pillar and started uh basically just masking out the pillar that the zombie would run behind this is very quick and easy process if you know how to mask a rotoscope um, nothing to it really just press v to change the handle type press alt c to close that mask and i end up with a uh, simple mask around that pillar i enabled automatic keyframes to do a little bit of rotoscoping because that camera pulled out and i wanted the mask to stay plastered to that uh, pillar the whole time that i needed it to be then it was just a matter of animating the actual renderability of the zombie. So you can do that by coming over to the outliner and pressing I over the render icon on the frame you don't need it to be, and then I on the frame that you do need it to be, and that'll create a render keyframe. Very, very simple. So now the zombie will 
only render on the frames I need it to, and it won't render on the frames I don't need it to. Then jumping into the compositor, I'm able to just add a new mask node, choose my pillar mask and make sure I invert it. So now on my alpha over node, the thing that's mixing my actual zombie with my footage is utilizing the factor input of my mask. So now it's saying, put the pillar in front of the zombie, which is exactly what we want. So I added a little bit of blur to that mask just to get rid of any imperfections you might see on my little rotoscope there. And you can see it does the job. It looks great. It looks like it actually fits in my scene. The last thing I did was just a little bit more lighting. I ended up adding an HDRI image, which I got for free from HDRI Haven. Did a little bit more tweaking of the lights before I did a final render. Once I was happy with that render, it was just a matter of jumping into the compositor and adding some color balance to make everything all come together. And then of course, for my final result, what I did was blend two different animations from Mixamo, one where the zombie ran right to left onto the frame, and then one where the zombie ran down the hallway toward the camera. I just thought that was fun putting those two together. So then once the color grading was the way I liked, just hook it up to the composite node, hit render, render out your animation, add some sound effects and you get something like this. All right, everyone, so I know that that was fast, just a broad stroke overview of how you could create your own zombie jump scare video. Really doesn't take that much time, especially if you utilize some of these free resources and it's a lot, a lot of fun. So please, if you do this effect or something anywhere similar, share it in the comments, send me a message. I'd love to see it. Uh, let me know and please give this video a big thumbs up, like it, smash it, destroy it, crush it, blow it up and subscribe if you're not already. I'll see you in the next Blender VFX tutorial. Thanks so much for watching.